Today we're going to check out some highlights from the Zero Emission Vehicles Factbook, published by Bloomberg NEF in December 2023. One key highlight here, annual passenger electric vehicle sales are on track to reach around 14.2 million units this year, up from 6.5 million in 2021. Of course, unfortunately, they include internal combustion engine vehicles with vibrator-sized batteries in this data. However, they're a tiny spec, so it doesn't really matter. More importantly, however, the trend is clear. Even if we remove hybrids, electric vehicle sales have doubled between 2021 and 2023. One more time. Doubled. On a good year, roughly 80 million passenger vehicles are sold, period. With just a few more doublings from electric vehicles being 100% of all new vehicles sold, it's officially prime time. We're entering the absolutely absurd surge in EV sales and adoption, and people simply are not ready. Another interesting note, automakers selling only electric vehicles now account for nearly 7% of global vehicle sales. In 2020, this was 1%. And I'll tell you what, if I were part of the other 93% still selling the horse and buggy, I would be panicking hard. So the global vehicle fleet, this is only four wheel vehicles, Today, in excess of one and a half billion vehicles. Guess what? In the future, this fleet, which today is comprised almost exclusively of internal combustion engine vehicles, will be comprised almost exclusively of electric vehicles. In other words, one and a half billion electric vehicles, give or take, will need to be sold between now and the global fleet having fully transitioned. Now the caveat there, autonomy may make this very hard to predict. Does the fleet contract because of the high utilization rate of autonomy or does the fleet remain the same because more miles are being driven, because more people can now afford to use vehicles where previously they couldn't because the cost of autonomous electric robot taxis are dramatically lower than ICE vehicles? I don't know. I'd privately model out different scenarios, including an approximately similar sized global vehicle fleet in the future and one that's actually significantly larger and also lower. My best guess, and that's all it is, is that the global vehicle fleet in the future will be at least the same size as it is today. Primary reasons for that. There are billions of people today living in poverty or thereabouts. We simply can't afford to use a vehicle at all, period. But as autonomy is solved and scales globally, autonomous robo-taxis, electric robo-taxis, will be within the means of people who today simply aren't part of the market, period. Meaning even though autonomous robo-taxis will mean much more utilization per vehicle, total miles driven on earth will massively increase as well. So back to the main point. One and a half billion electric vehicles need to be sold in the next few decades. This opportunity is enormous. Roughly 94 million new vehicles, including cars, trucks, and buses, so not just passenger vehicles, but also including trucks and buses, are expected to be added to the global fleet in 2023. And by the end of this year, China is expected to represent about 23% of the global four-wheel vehicle fleet, compared with 17% from the US. In other words, China really matters. Does anyone know any companies producing electric vehicles in China? I have a better question. Anyone know any companies producing electric vehicles in China for industry leading profits? No, neither do I. <clears throat> now, please don't tell this to the dumb fucks at many legacy automotive manufacturers, but combustion vehicle sales have already peaked. That's awkward. Peak ICE sales, 2017. Wait, that's, isn't that, why, why does 2017 ring a bell? Can someone remind me when Tesla's Model 3 was released? Now, obviously, there is a bit of an anomaly in the data here, which we do need to discuss. What happened in 2020? That's right, the scamdemic and the futile fascist inhumane shutdowns and then the insane supply chain shocks as a result. Could, people couldn't get chips, blah, blah, blah. You've heard the whole spiel. And at that time, feel free to fact check me. Or if you remember, and you watched my videos, you'll know that I said this. The scamdemic shutdowns and the massive shocks to the supply chain would further accelerate the demise of the internal combustion engine industry. And exactly that has since happened. From 2019 to 2020, ICE vehicle sales collapsed, but so did all vehicle sales. Couldn't get the chips, couldn't make the vehicles, couldn't sell the vehicles. However, there's been no rebound in internal combustion engine vehicle sales since. They've seen declines year after year. No rebound. It is very clear. Consumer preferences have changed. EVs are here and adoption is accelerating. Now again, I must remind you folks that as I recall this today, the public statements from a number of the world's legacy automotive manufacturers include their intent, at least this is what they're saying out loud, to still be selling internal combustion engine vehicles in 2030 and beyond. There's just one problem. ICE vehicle sales are about to fall off a cliff. People might say, that doesn't make sense. Haven't you noticed the decline's really gradual, you idiot? See, here's the thing. 
Electric vehicles, roughly here, depending on the company, blah, 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 have now officially reached sticker price parity with ICE vehicles. In other words, you can buy an electric vehicle with comparable features and functionality, and if we want to be fair, technically, probably safer, way better performance, better technology, etc. So today, you can buy an equivalent or significantly better electric vehicle for as little or less as you can a comparable or inferior internal combustion engine vehicle. And consumers who've done their homework also know that it is much cheaper to own and operate an electric vehicle. Prior to now, consumers had to pay a premium for a comparable electric vehicle. Now, depending on who they're buying from, this may still be the case, but Tesla exists and they don't exist in a vacuum, meaning we're now at the tipping point. A few years from now, electric vehicles will be significantly cheaper to purchase than comparable ICE vehicles. Not a little cheaper, not the same price, not slightly more expensive, significantly cheaper. And this is the point, as I've said in the past, where consumers will actually need to be dumb to buy the more expensive, inferior ICE vehicle. Now, there are plenty of dumb people out there. The bell curve is real. It's got a long tail. There's probably still going to be people in 2027 who buy an ICE vehicle. You can't fix stupid. But the vast majority of consumers in the next two to three years will realize that buying an ICE vehicle would be idiotic and they're not going to, meaning ICE vehicle sales collapse. And the companies producing ICE vehicles who today make all their profits selling ICE vehicles, every single legacy company trying to make electric vehicles are losing insane amounts of money per electric vehicle sold. The only reason they can do this is because they're still making money on their ICE vehicles. But as ICE vehicle sales collapse, ICE vehicle profits collapse and then go negative and then they're in big f***ing trouble. And one standout piece of data here, electric vehicle sales have increased from 2019 to 2022 by 253%. Absolutely insane. We're currently looking at global electric vehicle and full cell four-wheel vehicle sales. Now, you can just use your imagination to delete the light blue here, the plug-in hybrids. They're not EVs. They should never be in this data. And I wish people would stop presenting them as if they're electric vehicles. It does my fucking head in. As I said before, a man wearing lipstick is still a fucking man. And an ICE vehicle with a tiny battery shoved in it is still a fucking ICE vehicle. Anyway, point is, battery electric vehicle sales. Look at that exponential curve. This is not linear growth. And we're still just getting started. Electric vehicle sales this year, purely electric vehicle sales, will be just over 10% of all new vehicles sold. Makes the math quite easy. For context, in 2021, less than 5%. So, from 2021 to 2023, more than a doubling. Let's just say, hypothetically, approximately the same rate of doubling continues. One doubling every two years. And let's just say we're at 11% today. One doubling takes us to 22%. Another doubling to 44 Another doubling to 88% of all new vehicles being sold, being pure battery electric vehicles, three doublings. And if there's one doubling every two years, that's six years. Anyone good at math? Six years from 2023 is 2029. What are the odds that by the end of this decade, well in excess of 80, maybe 90 plus percent of all new vehicles sold will be electric. And my answer is the odds are extremely high, which might make two of us. Wait, what? Now, this really matters because once again, companies today are still saying that they expect to be selling many, if not a majority of vehicles with internal combustion engine beyond 2030. Toyota, for example, last I recall, were expecting roughly two thirds of their vehicles in 2030 to be internal combustion engines. Two thirds, they're in for a rude shock. Amazingly, sales of hydrogen full cell passenger vehicles are falling. And by the way, in case you guys couldn't see, the full cells were actually on this day, but it is so tiny, this tiny little purple sliver, you can barely see it. <laughs> by the way, hybrids are gonna suffer the exact same fate. So ice vehicle sales have peaked, full cell vehicles have peaked and so too, of hybrids, although maybe hybrids get another year or two of people foolishly thinking they're a good idea. Now, why are so many hybrids selling when they don't make any sense? The reason is lazy legacy automotive manufacturers who have brand loyal customers are able to convince their brand loyal customers, buy an ICE vehicle with a little battery in it, do something good for the environment. There was a tiny window of time where hybrids actually did make sense. That window has long since closed. Mark my words, hybrid sales are gonna follow a similar trend in decline to hydrogen fuel cell vehicles. And now, we are looking at global passenger and commercial zero emission vehicle fleet to 2040 various outlooks. Now, this jargon is annoying. They're basically looking at electric vehicles plus some other dumb shit that'll end up going extinct that was considered a zero emission vehicle as well. But this is a good enough proxy for estimates for electric vehicle adoption. Notice, you can see visually for yourself, the further back in time, the more embarrassingly off the mark. Notice that these extrapolations tend to be linear rather than exponential. Easy mistake to make if you rely on intuition, emotions, and feelings rather than logic. But check this out. On average, new forecasts for the battery electric vehicle fleet size in 2030. 
have risen 26% since last year. Not 2.6%, 26%. That's very embarrassing. 26%. Huge margin of error. Oh, by the way, <laughs> this report next year is going to look almost identical with another increase of a comparable amount showing once again that even today, the so-called experts with their forecasts have failed to learn their lessons. Another page, another example of extremely awkward, very intelligent expert forecasts being catastrophically wrong. Again, the further back in time we go, the more embarrassing the forecasts. Now, I want to make sure you guys understand here. We are looking at the percentage of electric vehicles being sold as a percentage of all vehicle sales. This is not fleets anymore. We're not talking about replacing the entire fleet. We're just talking about vehicles sold per year. How many vehicles sold in each year are electric versus internal combustion engine? Okay. Some of the earlier estimates had no more than maybe 23, 24% of all new vehicles being sold in 2040 being electric. Now, even the most aggressive of these estimates are shockingly off the mark. The most aggressive on this entire list here. Call it 75% of all new vehicles being sold in 2040 being electric. You idiots. And this is from Bloomberg NEF, whose report we are currently reading. This is the most aggressive. Okay, so, so let me just make a prediction here, okay? I'm going to put this on the record, and I would love you guys to keep me accountable. So check back in, let's call it early 2031 when you have the data, okay? These estimates are off by approximately one decade. In other words, if you take these estimates and drag them back to 2030, they will be much closer if we're assuming these estimates were for 2030 EV sales, as a percent of all new vehicle sales, than 2040. They're off by a fucking decade. Now, this really matters. Let me explain why. It's not like these estimates span two centuries. It's currently 2023. These estimates span a 17 year period. Yet I'm saying that their margin of error is a decade. Of course, I could be wrong, but when I'm not, I expect you guys to revisit this video, set a reminder, dig it up and go, oh, hey, hey, isn't that funny that some dickhead on the internet said they were off by 10 years and well, the data's in, it's 2030 electric vehicle sales were 80 plus percent of all new vehicles sold globally. Amazing. How did this guy know and all these experts, how were they wrong again? Now, the reason I'm emphasizing this, guys, is because a lot of decision makers are reliant upon these supposed expert forecasts for decision making. And again, does anybody notice something? Are these linear extrapolations? They sure are linear. But isn't EV adoption happening exponentially? It sure is. So what's going on here? Well, I think this is called I'm an expert syndrome. Just picture this in your mind. These linear extrapolations for all new vehicles being sold. Percentage that are electric vehicles, all right? Now, we're going to go back a couple of pages and look at historical data and tell me if you can notice the discrepancy. Estimates, straight lines, straight line extrapolation. Actuals, exponential. I, could, I mean... I just don't even know what to say, guys. How are these supposed experts so wrong? I just don't get it. There are now almost 41 million passenger electric vehicles on roads. And again, I'm going to stop repeating myself, but these dickheads are still including hybrids, but whatever. Close enough. The majority are EVs. 41 million. The reason I mention this is part of my test evaluation model, which most of you have heard, but if you haven't, you can access on Patreon at the investor level and above. Link in description. A core component to my test evaluation model, which spans the next decade, is the size of Tesla's vehicle fleet, which at some point in the future will easily exceed 100 million vehicles. The majority of these vehicles will be paying a monthly subscription for Tesla software, e.g. full self-driving, possibly many other things as well. The way to think about Tesla and its valuation over the long term isn't how many vehicles are they selling per year, it's how many active vehicles in their fleet, how many active monthly users, and what are those users paying per month in high margin software revenue? I'm just kidding, Tesla's just a car company. <laughs> Oh, thank fuck. Here's the data excluding ICE vehicles with a vibrator sized battery. We're just looking at pure battery electric vehicles. 29 million battery electric vehicles in the global fleet as of today. Well, as of Bloomberg's estimates for the end of the year, which is good enough. Oh, and um, here's another thing to consider. Many electric vehicles in the fleet of tomorrow will eventually license Tesla software, which is also my valuation model, link in description. Now, we saw earlier that Roughly 1.5 billion vehicles are in today's global fleet of vehicles. And I postulate that 100% of roughly all vehicles in the future will be electric. So is anyone good at math? What's 1.5 billion minus 29 million? Because that's how many remaining electric vehicles will need to be sold in the next few decades. The answer, by the way, is 1 billion 471 million. So roughly speaking, less than 2% of the electric vehicles that need to be sold have been sold. Another way to think about this, just hypothetically speaking, let me pull a totally random number out of my ass. Let's say there was a company out there that 
thought that they would sell maybe 20 million electric vehicles per year. What a crazy idea, right? as if there'd be a company that would be so audacious. But just to pretend, now, and let's also assume that they were the only company selling electric vehicles, just for illustration purposes. How many years would it take for them to replace the entire global fleet with electric vehicles if they were producing and selling 20 million a year? The answer would be 75 years. Obviously, there are many companies who'll be producing and selling electric vehicles. But now that we have the number 75, we can do some simple math here. Let's just imagine, hypothetically, that there was a company that ultimately ended up selling 20% of all of the electric vehicles sold until the global fleet is entirely replaced, meaning 20% of 1.5 billion. How many vehicles would that be? Uh, the answer would be 300 million. That's a lot of vehicles. Imagine if those vehicles had an average selling price of $25,000. How much revenue would that be? The answer would be $7.5 trillion dollars trillion with a t but don't worry it's not like there's any company that's probably going to end up selling 20 percent of all electric vehicles ever sold so let's move on here's an interesting graphic ev demand in china is running ahead of what regulations require hmm, it's interesting i thought the ccp was was pretty strict and very aggressive with their ev targets what could possibly be going on spoiler alert electric vehicles are commercially inevitable economically inevitable they are better and cheaper and therefore consumer preferences are shifting with or without regulations rules and mandates the ev transition will happen china has the most advanced ev marketplace with the most competitive products the truth is the few companies in china are actually making a profit selling their electric vehicles and there's not that many of them but they do exist have fairly thin margins but at least some of them are actually making money selling compelling enough affordable enough electric vehicles outside of china tesla is the only company making any money selling electric vehicles and they're making quite a bit doing so. So the data is a little bit skewed in regions outside of China. But guess what's going to happen as the EV industry continues to mature in the next few years? EV sales, demand, whatever you want to call it, will be ahead of all of the insane, unnecessary and fascist mandates. And the politicians who've inserted themselves into people's ability to freely choose what they purchase will be patting themselves on the back going, look, how insane, unnecessary policies were super effective. We're even ahead of schedule. We're so good. Let us please take all of the credit for the EV transition because it wasn't commercially inevitable. The cost declines didn't make this obvious. It wasn't an inevitable disruption. We're so smart. If it weren't for our insane, unnecessary policies, this would never have happened. So I'm just, again, putting this on the record because it will play out and I'd love you guys to keep me accountable and remind me that I said this would happen once it has. And here's a very interesting piece of information. Several automakers are at or above 20% EV sales globally. <laughs> uh, guess who? Geely aka Volvo. For those of you who don't know, the ownership structure, Geely owns Volvo and Polestar. It's a bit of technology sharing between the two companies, which makes a bit of sense. BMW, miraculously, just over the 20% threshold as well. And Mercedes-Benz has just hit the 20% mark. Admittedly, BMW, Mercedes, very low volume automotive manufacturers. Their electric products aren't that compelling, but there are some very loyal, I'll only ever buy a BMW type people. But the further down the list we go, generally speaking, the higher volume of vehicles being produced and the lower the percentage of electric vehicles being produced meaning the more f***ed these companies are vw group embarrassingly not even at 10 percent approximately the same as nissan and stellantis ford sub five percent honda <laughs> what is that like one and a half percent if you're lucky and toyota maybe two and a half percent and obviously this excludes pure electric vehicle companies because otherwise <laughs> the scale on the chart would be ridiculous so the way to think about this as it stands today even a very advanced company in terms of the EV transition like Geely, Volvo. Roughly three quarters of their vehicle sales are currently the horse and buggy. For a company like VW, more than 90% of their sales are the horse and buggy. Ford, <laughs> more than 95%. Toyota, almost 100%. I personally don't think that's going to end well. But what would I know? I'm just some guy on the internet. And what do we have here? It appears to be a cost curve. Volume weighted average lithium ion battery pack price. Inflation adjusted to $2023. So dollars per kilowatt hour. Back in 2010, $1,391 per kilowatt hour. In 2023, $139 per kilowatt hour. How convenient. A 90% decline in cost per kilowatt hour in just over a decade. But of course, <laughs> the cost declines are definitely going to stop now because if they weren't going to stop now, the cost to purchase an electric vehicle the battery of which is the single most expensive thing in the vehicle by miles, would continue to plummet. And since electric vehicles are already at price parity with ICE vehicles, that would mean a few years from now they'll be much cheaper 
And if that were true, then consumers would require brain damage to buy ICE vehicles a few years from now, and that would mean that ICE vehicle sales would collapse and all the companies currently producing the majority of vehicles with internal combustion engines in them will probably be filing for bankruptcy. But that would definitely not happen, so nothing to see here. Move along. But seriously, though, this is the single most important part of the electric vehicle adoption thesis. Costs will continue to decline, and this has major implications. At current prices, a roughly 75 kilowatt hour battery pack common in a typical electric vehicle with reasonable range, is about $10,000. Given the fact that we've seen consistent cost declines, a slight anomaly here due to the scamdemic-induced lockdown, supply chain challenges and shortages because EV adoption happening faster than people thought and some folks hadn't done the math, we've seen reasonable cost declines this entire time. They will not stop. The rate of the cost declines may slow, but decline costs will. Would it surprise you to know that if this cost $139 per kilowatt hour declined by just 5% per year over the next decade, keep in mind, we've seen dramatic multi-double digit percentage declines on these things. Just 5% per year at a consistent rate, which it won't be consistent, but play along for a decade. A decade from now, we'd be looking at about $83 per kilowatt hour, about 60% of today's cost, meaning a 40% decline, meaning that $10,000 is now 6,000, meaning a saving of $4,000. And here we can see electric vehicle only automakers now represent nearly 7% of all new cars sold globally. In 2015, this was a fraction of 1%. It wasn't until 2020 that these companies hit 1% of all new vehicles sold. And in the first half of 2023, now approaching 7%. These are the companies to focus on. This is where the growth is. These are the disruptors, although some of them will ultimately go bankrupt trying. Of note, Rental companies are increasing their electric vehicle offerings. Check this out. Hertz are targeting, and obviously a target doesn't mean it happens, but targeting 25% of their entire vehicle fleet to be elected by the end of 2024. Question, if true, which, I mean, it is their goal, and if Tesla makes far and away the most compelling and well-priced electric vehicles, and importantly, most efficient, meaning they go further for equivalent charge, meaning they're cheaper to own and operate and require the least maintenance, what are the odds that Hertz will ultimately end up buying a majority of their vehicles from Tesla despite the fact that they have signaled to the marketplace so far that they plan on spreading the money around and buying lots of vehicles from lots of different companies producing electric vehicles? We heard not long ago from Hertz that despite the fact that they'd promised to buy lots of vehicles from lots of companies, they were realizing that apart from Tesla, there's nothing really compelling. So they were slowing up their acquisition of EVs made by companies that don't start with Tez and end in La. Europe car targeting 25% of their fleet being electric by the end of 2024, and six targeting 70 to 90% of their European fleet being electric and hybrid by 2030. Now, the reason that I'm showing this is these are big customers. We are talking about orders of tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of vehicles. And to wrap up on a very embarrassing slide, automakers 2035 ambitions do not match up to country targets. Now, Remember I talked earlier about the fact that these mandates, e.g. the targets from different countries about vehicles being sold are totally unnecessary and the market itself will be way ahead of these unnecessary targets? Okay, now that I've reminded you of that, what we're now seeing is the majority of companies here are aiming to fall short of the targets which I personally believe will be massively exceeded by EV adoption. In other words, EV adoption is going to happen even more aggressively than these insane targets, yet the majority of automotive manufacturers today are not even aiming for these targets, but instead significantly short of these targets. There's a very big disconnect here where they think they're still going to be selling ICE vehicles far beyond the point that any consumer with any brain cells will be buying them. To illustrate this insanity, <laughs> automakers accounting for 25% of the 2022 global passenger vehicle market, so one quarter of the vehicle market, have stated their intentions to stop selling ICE vehicles by 2035. And remember, this is nowhere near aggressive enough. My prediction, two, three years from now, ICE vehicle sales will have collapsed. And I mean collapsed, not just be a little bit less, collapsed, and panic will have set in. So think about this. These companies, the most aggressive 25%, still think that in 2034, they will be selling ICE vehicles. That is not gonna happen. And that's the 25% most aggressive. The other 75%, Presumably still expect they'll be selling ICE vehicles beyond 2035. And I predict that they'll be filing for bankruptcy way before that date. How's this? Honda, for example, has set a target for 2040 for its ICE phase out. This is going to be absolutely brutal. Oh, by the way, just out of interest, does anyone know any companies that happen to have industry leading scale and profitability and the best, most compelling products and technology 
in terms of electric vehicles? Because if there is such a company with a clear, possibly unassailable lead, and the entire industry, governments, all the experts are forecasting electric vehicle sales adoption will happen a lot slower than the reality, that might suggest that many investors are not seeing the possible potential of future growth and profitability for such a company, meaning that there's possibly an opportunity there which I'd really like to know about. So please, if you know such a company, let me know in the comments below. I might buy some of their stock. Want more content? Early access? Bunch of perks? Click the links in the pinned comment. AG1 has given me a massive, meaningful boost in energy, allowing me to do a lot more every day, including using my brain more and using my body more. I highly recommend you guys and girls check it out. It's an excellent way to fill in nutritional gaps. It's got 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, and whole food source nutrients, plus prebiotics and probiotics and digestive enzymes and adaptogens to help you deal with stress. Plus, if you click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com SMR, you can get yourself a one year free supply of vitamin D3 and K2. But don't take my word for it. Here's what some of you guys and girls have to say. AG1 has changed my life. I was, as you described, treating myself like a circus. I ate like trash, rarely exercised, used alcohol as a stress crutch, cannabis also. AG1 is what gave me the kick in the ass, got me back to the gym, motivated me to do more for myself, family, my business, etc. Keep doing what you do. Now, I know there's some skeptics, the same kind of people who think Elon Musk is a fraud reading this going, what do you thought? There's no way that's possible, bro. It must be a placebo effect. Believe it or not, this is a recurring theme. If you give your body everything it needs to feel and perform its best, including having a lot more energy, you'll need ways to use that energy. For me personally, that includes more exercise, moving my body more, more social activity, and more cognitively demanding tasks, including producing a fuck ton of exclusive content over on Twitter and on Patreon, plus my daily YouTube uploads. The proof's in the pudding. On to another testimonial from a viewer of this channel. SMR, you asked me to provide feedback on AG1. Here it is. It has helped with mental acuity, stamina, and intestinal waste management. Uh, can't read between the lines. It certainly helps with regularity and digestion. That's what the digestive enzymes are for. It has also dramatically reduced my cravings for sugar. You guys need to stop eating sugar. It's fucking poison. I'm 50, 5'9", and overweight, aka a fat motherfucker. I think that's a technical term for overweight, isn't it? Is it fat motherfucker or obese? I can't remember. I average 100 hours a week in the West Texas oil fields as a safety supervisor. Jesus Christ, dude. No wonder you're struggling to keep your weight under control. 100 hours a week. Brutal. It has helped me lose weight. It is not an appetite suppressant. It can help fat people suppress cravings and motivation to be healthier is critical for changing your diet. Love you, brother. Again, this is a great point. It's something people really don't seem to grasp. If you have more energy, everything becomes easier. It's like turning on easy mode for life. A few years ago, before I was taking AG1, my health was trash. I was struggling to get through the day, had afternoon fatigue. The last thing I wanted to do was either use my brain or move my body. Didn't have the energy. Now, my biggest struggle every day is figuring out ways to use that energy. I'm exercising way more, doing a lot more with my friends and family, and of course, my work output has increased substantially. And you can fact check me. Check out the average length of my videos I was posting to YouTube three years ago. Need I say more? And one final testimonial. Love this one. Okay, here's the deal for me with this AG1 shit. I'm 41 years old and not the type to eat, drink, smoke, or sleep healthy, so I was skeptical. That being said, here's what I experienced. Day one, meh. Day two, afternoon fatigue was about 45 minutes late. Day three, zero afternoon fatigue. Day four, zero afternoon fatigue plus extra energy. Day five, again, zero afternoon fatigue plus energy. Wondering, what the f really? See, this is the thing, right? The results for many people are just almost too good to be true. This, this is the same experience I had. My afternoon fatigue just vanished out of nowhere. I'm like, wait, what the f Why am I not tired in the afternoons anymore? Surely, it's not that AG1, is it? Turns out it was. Day six and seven, same thing. Day eight, same thing. Plus, I had the want to get things done around the house that I normally would slack off and not get done. Again, the point, extra energy, you'll need to use it, you'll find ways to use it. Day 9, 10, and 11, and today is day 12. I fucking love it. So however you managed to get me to buy it, I'm so glad you did. Thank you so much, SMR. It really changed me so far. Guys, this shit really works. Just try it. By the way, this is the reason I continue to relentlessly promote AG1. A lot of people get real fucking mad in the comments. Oh my god, Snake Oil Salmon sold out. Oh my god, he's a scammer. This is fraud. But Constantly... I'm pretty sure everyone making these comments is also currently short Tesla stock. I'm not particularly concerned about people having a negative perception, those folks suffering from small brain syndrome, still living in my bum's basement syndrome, etc., writing mean comments, claiming AG1's a scam or it doesn't work. I mean, bro, when I get feedback like this, this is what keeps me going. Just try this stuff for a month, and if you don't get these results, get your money back. See, it's a literal no-brainer. It's an IQ test at this point in time. Testimonial after testimonial after testimonial like this. Get your money back if it doesn't work. Just try it for a month, and if it doesn't work... Get your money back. Today's the day. It's finally time.
Be like this guy who was a massive skeptic, but finally, after a thousand promotions in a row, caved in, tried AG1, and has results like this. Head to drinkag1.com slash SMR or click the link at the pinned comment and please let me know how you're feeling in a few weeks' time. Now, if you'll excuse me, time to put my extra energy to good use. I'll be recording some more exclusive content for Patreon and my Twitter subscribers. So click the links at the pinned comment, see you over on Twitter and or Patreon, and don't forget to grab your AG1. Love ya.